Fire away, say. Yes, I. They are getting out of the reason. It's the same way. It's a serious yeah? thing. Today, a special one here. Want to deal with the, the master teacher, the philosopher, Marcus Messiah Garvey, you know? Baba, Baba Marcus, great black, black revolutionary. Love that, like, what's up, you know? That's a serious thing. So check it. Um, we have the thing there, and we encourage the people watching. Uh, it's a link there in the description, like a little blog post vibe to check out. But uh, we want to go over what I refer to as um, eight lessons from an African philosopher, you know? And uh, the first one is uh, having purpose, living a life of purpose, having a purpose in your life, right? Uh, I excite that one. I want to tell you that I say, it's funny enough because me always say human beings are the only people who come on earth without sighting their true purpose. Like a bees come on earth and know that they're supposed to pollinate flowers and plants. Ants come and come come on earth and know they're supposed to work in humans to gather food to bring back to the field. But human beings come on earth and even when them dead, them still never know them true purpose. <laughs> so imagine even the mind the minds them were oppressed now. Which is which is I and I African people too. Them still not gonna find them true purpose because they're gonna always try to strive towards the slave master Wilson. Purpose is a thing we're lacking and it needed if you have to actually strive in a life, you know? No, big time man. A life without purpose. Cause what happens right now, how I cite the thing is that most people exist but very few people live, you know? Exactly. And to be on a live vibe is you definitely need a purpose and the reason for the purpose is when it keep you focused and it keep you motivated. Most people sometimes when they have like a goal or a test they want to accomplish, initially they're on fire. Mm -hmm. You know, but that fire dwindles a lot because they really don't have no purpose. And you need that purpose when you're doing certain things because things are rough. Road not easy, yeah. <laughs> Believe you me, the road not yeah. easy. So if you have that purpose, it gives you strength to get through those rough times, you know. Next thing the Bergeron said is that black parents are responsible for teaching their children. African history. Of course, too, because I, I want to tell you, say, and next thing to him really sight up, say, when I have a youth still in you know, a slavery, I'm going to be the last knowledge of them really find out about it. It's going to be the last thing with them find out about because more and them really offers them royalty. And I'm going to learn it from I first. I can't depend on a school teacher to teach them a standardized thing based off of some form of curriculum. So I have to make sure that I incite the knowledge there. Marcus Gavi yeah, philosophy is one of the philosophies that we really come and show we so watch you know the internal thing you know you have to start start within yourself and make sure so you can teach ones and ones around and then you extend that and that was the purpose of the UNIA reader really, when you check it the internal vibes amongst African people so that necessary internal teaching uh, big time and and parents do need to take responsibility because uh, what I notice is that there's a vibe where it's just push the child off to the school Exactly. And the school is not intended to actually create intellectual beings, you know. The, the the origin of it is not necessary. Just create somebody for the workforce. But now I don't know what it's there for because they're not creating people for the workforce. You know, so it's very important for a person to learn their own culture and learn their own history. So first, a person has to take responsibility to learn. Their, I don't want to hear about nobody didn't teach you. I don't want to hear about your parents didn't teach you. I don't want to hear about the school teach you because that's a dependency mindset. If a person's, if you're aware, this is what bugs me out. If I am aware of a person's not providing me something that I need, why am I still dependent on that person that I think to give it to me? When they, exactly. all, they obviously already de demonstrated they're not going to give it to me. You know? Some so, of them don't <clears throat> even know it themselves too because they, they only know how they, how they follow the will of the oppressor and them, them themselves being an oppressor have a higher oppressor who oppress them. So for their mind more focused on that individualism than for really teach you certain things. So you never and, forget that. And you know what I pre a lot in education in regards to educators, or you want to say whether it's from pre-K all the way up to university levels that they're unaware of their own indoctrination. Exactly. So when they're doing certain things, they're not doing it consciously. You get what I'm saying? Exactly. Because they've been given something that they feel is the correct thing and they're just sharing it, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> all right. Next thing there is, um, uh, this is one. Great wealth is made out of commerce and industry, right? <laughs> that one there, I'm going to take that one because the nine to five is not made for any form of financial freedom, any type of growth. You're on fixed income. Exactly. You get what I'm saying? And most people don't understand they're on fixed income. For those of you unaware of what fixed income means is that 
regardless of what you do, what you stay, how long you stay, how you try to kiss up and all that and all this foolishness, you're just going to get a fixed amount of money every paycheck. And that yeah. usually for majority of people, I say for 70, 80 percent of the country, that usually is barely enough for you to survive. Therefore, you have to go back. And also that creates a culture where you have to be subservient to your superior because that's what kind of keeps it down. Those who disrespect and, and buck the system, they get kicked out. But yeah, those no who stay there have to really toe the line. And they, it is not just the fact of the authority doesn't come because of the authority figure. The authority comes because of the financial dependency. You need that check to survive because you have no savings. But we're going to get into the next one. And, and, that, and that take with your whole human, human, that take with your human, whole human perspective to, you know, because check level up. You see, you see the whole ruler, ruler of coming a corporation. I hate, I hate my boss and I fear, I fear my boss. My boss fear, fear, fear his boss. And my boss is boss fear his boss. See, the, see the whole chain of command where they put into place. It's stuff we from really elevating. And know what you would say. But that's why we feel like the whole aspect of collective security is a very, very important thing. Collective security play a big role in improving the whole structure, there, you know? And the corporate structure, anybody interested to study it, but the corporate structure, the corporate structure follows the same format as the military in regards to chain of command. That's the origin exactly. of you know, when it came because corporate structure didn't come into like 50s, 60s, from what I understand. All right, next one, right? Man should always a person should save 15 to 20 percent of their check and he recommends doing it not just for the uh, saving and having a cushion but uh having some funds there when opportunities present itself right what i've learned in my short life on earth is that it's not the fact of how much finances you have it's about the discipline you have with your finances so if you're a lot of people say you know um i'll be in a better position or things would be better if i had more money and the answer is actually no. You just be more irresponsible because you're an irresponsible yeah. person. So <clears throat> whether you're making ten dollars or a hundred dollars, you have to demonstrate that discipline. You know, uh, 15, 20 percent may be high for a lot of people who are just living hand to mouth. But if you could, if you could put away a five percent or a ten percent just to get that discipline and learn a skill, because if you don't have a skill, you can't increase your ability to earn. Yeah. That's the vibe we need to understand. Some people are in a position you have to be in there forever. You have to increase your ability to earn, right? And the next thing I want to add on that one is that <laughs> you, you know the guy, Mr. Jones, right? Everybody talk about the Joneses. No. You never heard that term? Is uh uh following the Joneses, like people trying to stay up with the trends. Oh, 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 copy, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Turn that vibe. Yeah. All right, then. Yeah. So the hypeness, that insecurity and ignorance is the source of most people's financial problems. When they're spending their money, they're not thinking about the, the use of the particular product. They're thinking about others' views of the product. I'll give you a car, exactly. for example, right? A person goes to buy a car and they know their budget. They're aware of how much money they have. They don't go to buy the car saying like, you know, the uh, the economics of the car. No, they're, the first folk, any man listen to this, deny it, lying, you know? The first focus mm -hmm. when they're buying this car is how it look to others, how will it impress others, how will yeah, others the them. The image. And that's what cripple most of them financially, you know, but that's the next reason. Next one, right? Don't keep old ideas, bury them as new ones come. Then that the process of evolution is when enough man, enough one don't get in you know, a change. Change is that thing we're constant, you know, constant. The only constant thing is change, you know. It's sound like an oxymoron, but it's that thing where people have to really know because you see if you now grow up. It not make no sense. The internal and the external growth of your connect fire. You can't really stuck in the past. The past not the only thing I use the past for as a John Henry Clark sent him Clark is a man who always put the markers there to two all, all the way around and tell us that history is like a clock. And you just use it to tell the time. So when you use history to tell the time you now, that's when you realize you now when evolution comes into play you now, you see how you can build and advance from the thoughts we have in the past and see yourself. Okay? You make it your correction in the earth, you know, you can't you like say you did all everything where you know right now is correct. You, know? you might know something now and so firm in you know, that belief and best belief so when you have month from now, some facts come out and expose that belief. Big you know, time, like, you know, and you can't hold on to the old thing if it get exposed exactly. that it's not working, you know. You have to humble yourself exactly. and and, and move on and grow. Exactly. All right. Uh, next one here is that, um, all right, <clears throat> it's a long quote. I'm gonna try to break it down. The man basically say, you cannot depend on another who's impressing you to help you. 
Yeah. You know, that's the just the I read, more I read that for them, I No, they have to read it. Check, click the link <laughs> right, and, and right, read the thing it. for the fullness. But that's what yeah. the man basically saying is very true because um, what we have now is that <laughs> we have a distortion and we want to clarify. We're not saying all people evil and all that type of foolishness. We're not mm -hmm. saying that. But we are saying that there is a system in place. And you have to stop looking toward the system who's exploiting you to help you. We exactly. just have to be realistic about stuff. You get what I'm saying? Exactly. And, and that's, I, the, that's where the rat race, and the rat race to it, in that talk about them at all, but that's like the whole political agenda now and people, people them have, it's like them are different from politicians to do what they don't do. It's, it's a some type of vibe like that. You know? Yeah, and, 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 and next reasoning, we're going to run through this. Last one is, <laughs> uh, he said it before, but go again. Uh, no one is ever too old to learn, right? And that one, I want to say two things on it. One is that what I noticed, we have a lot of elders out there who struggle with reading and true pride and whatever else going on. They just stay in there and you miss out on so much. Because remember this about reading. If you can't read, right, the only information you get is from your peers and the media. And no disrespect to your peers. But I really doubt they're on the heights where they teach you something crazy. True, you know, true, and the media like. giving you propaganda. So the, the, the beauty of reading is that you really get to pick the mind of some of the greatest people on earth. So if you can't read, you can't partake in that. And it's very hard to grow. I'm not saying a man can't be on the heights without reading, you know, but the average person in industrial society definitely needs reading to grow and get that information, you know. And at the next token, too, as you <coughs> as you stated before, you're always learning. My granny, my well, granny used to tell me that yeah, you're always learning. You're always learning. You're always learning till you drop dead. You're always learning. You're always yeah. learning. You know, and some people, they just feel like they reach a point and it's they they, they don't want to hear nothing else and they stuck in their ways and you're always learning. You know. I see the people them who are interested to learn. Them have a, them have a set pattern and a set behavior. They realize when they in a conversation with them, them rather talk straight through. And not listen, listen to your point that you have to bring because them think them already know. So it's like it's when they are, when they are talk to them, it more feel like a monologue type than a, than a dialogue, so to speak. Because if, if a man to learn, if a man no willing to learn, it's showing him reasoning, it's showing the way he approach things, and him always have got a basically a fear and a fear and a fear. Things that he might do things. So everything always that I remain in my mind and now go manifest. I tell you that Baba Baba Gavi. Right, pretty much. Uh, big time, and everyone listening, highly recommend. Click the link there, take you to INeverNewTV.com. Enough new articles coming up. I have a reason. This one here is called, what's it called? Marcus Messiah Garvey, Eight Lessons from an African Philosopher. Also, I have some book recommendations under there for you. So, um, give thanks for the support. New reasoning coming soon. Ballhead and the Dread podcast. Yes, Fire with give thanks. Thank you for watching I Never Knew TV. Please subscribe, comment, like, and...